Well, when I was in high school, I uh, was in marching band. And uh, I had a lot of good times. And I was one of those classes, uh, every three years, they always do a high school trip, uh, a band trip. And uh, I was one of those classes that got to go on two band trips. And so uh, I was lucky, got to march in the Philadelphia Parade, and also was able to march in uh, the L.A. Hollywood Parade. And so I got to do two of those trips. And I say this because uh, the high school band, or your high school students, they were gone last week. They were on a trip, and they marched in the Cherry Blossom uh, parade, and then they got to go up to New York City. And so it's a it's a interesting thing, though, marching in these parades. Uh, I know that you'll say, well, you always march in the homecoming parade in Monticello. And uh, yes, we did. Uh, and nowadays, they just ride buses sometimes. But, uh, that's, anyway, never mind. Okay. But, uh, but we, uh, we, you know, you always said the parade. You've been to parades before. There's the pomp and circumstance, you know, people cheering and clapping and are excited. But there's something different when you march in these big cities like uh, Philadelphia or in L.A. or I'm assuming in Washington, D.C. as well, is that they have, there's big buildings and instead of hundreds of people, there's thousands of people. And so you hear all this excitement, and you hear people shouting, and you hear these things. And if you just, uh, not that I ever stopped playing, but if you would stop playing and just look around, you could see some pretty neat things, you know, because usually there's like a busy cars driving by or, or taxi cabs and all this. And you're here on the street, and you're looking up at these, these huge buildings, now, if my memory is correct, which I've learned that it's not always correct, and uh, it, we were at the Hollywood Parade, and uh, I'm, you may have to correct me, but I remember we marched this, this parade, and it was, it, was a, it was a long parade. And both of these parades were uh, Thanksgiving parades, but really Christmas parades. Does that, yeah, that's how it works. And, uh, and so uh, Philadelphia, we were freezing cold, and L.A., I was just sweating. And uh, so I didn't have one. But, but we were marching, and we're marching this long path, and then we get to the point in the parade where it's on TV, you know, and, and you have the commentators and everything. And at the, at the Hollywood parade, uh, we got to the point, and if I'm correct, it was carpet. There was red carpet. Yes, good, thank you. I'm so glad you're here today. And, uh, and we got there, and, you know, after uh, marching, uh, miles upon miles upon miles. I don't know. Uh, it was it was almost a relief to all of a sudden hit that carpet with your feet instead of the pavement, and it felt a whole lot nicer. Now, for people like me, uh, who uh, a tuba player, you know, where my back was hurting and just you know just the pain of a tuba player. But we carry the marching band, you know, as tuba players. <laughs> uh, but we. We're, and we're always dashing in our looks as well. This is awesome. Ryan, you're here. This is great. My, yes, I'm not alone in my tuba. There was a tuba player at first service as well. Any other tuba players out there? No? 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 Okay. All right. Well, we'll do a duet later. Uh, but as you're marching along and you're on this pavement, all of a sudden, it's really nice to all of a sudden start marching on carpet. And as we see the story of Palm Sunday... As we see the story of Jesus coming into Jerusalem, it's a parade. It's a celebration. People are excited. It's an exciting time. And what's so impressive to me is that people begin to start laying things down. And granted, Jesus was walking or was riding on a donkey. But at the same time, it was a relief of, of any of the pain in the donkey's feet. It was a celebration of a parade that was going on and, and saying that there's an exciting, uh, something exciting going on. Palm Sunday is a celebration. Palm Sunday is this idea of, uh, when we look at it, we see that you know, Jesus has these years of ministry. And Palm Sunday comes, and it's a whole new ball game. Holy Week and Passion Week begin. Jesus begins to, to focus in Not on ministry, but focus in on what He is supposed to do for us. For you. And so this this idea of Palm Sunday is a, a celebration that we need to celebrate as well. That we need to figure out what does it mean, what does Palm Sunday mean for us to be authentic followers of Jesus Christ? What does it mean for us in celebrating this day that will help us to be better followers of, of Christ. 
And so our lesson today is the lesson of Palm Sunday. It's in Matthew 21. And let's read the Scripture. As they approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there and with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and He will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, and foil of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. I think this story is an interesting story. And we see where it starts. It starts in Bethage, which is actually a couple miles north of Jerusalem. A couple miles back then is a is a, is, is a lot because they didn't have automobiles, but a couple miles, and uh, and so we see that we see that as uh, as Jesus is is beginning this entry into Jerusalem, that the parades begin, that the celebration begins, and we can look at the picture and we can see that Jesus is coming in, and people are are excited that he is there. And and uh, this isn't just a, a something that's happening for just a block. In the city, it's happening for miles as Jesus enters into this this place, and and we see that the people begin to uh, to to celebrate. And I think it's also interesting as we see that Jesus is walking, not walking, coming in on a donkey. You know, it, it makes me think of of, G, of, of Mary uh, riding a donkey to Bethlehem, and uh, the parallel of humility of our Savior coming in as King of Israel. And we see that as he rides on the donkey, it fulfills, it fulfills, it fulfills a prophecy in Zechariah 9.9. It says that he will come riding in on a donkey. And so we see as this week is, is beginning, we see that prophecies begin to start coming true. And we begin to see everything just start to click. And everything is, is falling into place the way that it should be. And the people begin to, to lay palms down uh, because they were making, it was Passover. So along the roads, they were making tents and they were making uh, lean-tos. They had to have a place to stay. And so they were just hanging out. And they were just making these, these places. And as Jesus came, they realized that there was something going on. There was something special about this person. Now, uh, if you've ever been in a situation where all of a sudden there's famous people around, there begins to be a stir, Right? And uh, there was one time that Chris and I were at a concert in Chicago. And uh, what's the what's uh, what's the Saved by the Bell? What's his name? What? Dustin Diamond. That's right. Is that right? Nate. Yes. What's Screech? Screech. There you go. Oh yeah, Screech. Yeah. And I and I remember that people were saying, "Oh, Screech is here at the concert." And you know, and and Chris and I sort of screed where the the Screech was, and like we like. Oh, there he is. That screech. Who knew that he would later then start wrestling? Anyway, that's okay. And, uh, but, but that's what was going on here. People, Jesus is coming. Who's this Jesus? I don't know, but a lot of people are talking about him. And there was just a scurrying to the, to the roads, to the sides of the street. People were coming and gathering and saying, Who is this? I need to know who this is. And so they came, and, and then they, they began to recognize that this was more than just, uh, uh, just a, a, a B celebrity. This was someone of importance. And they began to lay down their cloaks. And they began to, to lay down these branches. And I'm assuming that the people probably started talking, and, and people started telling stories of Jesus you know, telling stories of how he talked about love and how he raised Lazarus from the dead and, and how this is. This is the Son of God. This is our Savior. Because then they began to shout Hosanna. 
And when I hear Hosanna, I just think of it's an honoring, it's a celebration of, of Jesus' name. You know, Hosanna, Hosanna. But the, the literal translation for Hosanna was, these people were shouting, save us now. They're saying, save us now. You know, save us. We, we are living in a world right now you know, as, as, as these people were, that were the, the political powers were corrupt. The religious leaders were, were not leading at all. They were lacing their own pockets with money. They were, they were being deceitful. Where, where people were not taking care of each other. And these people that lined the streets were crying out saying, Save us now. Hosanna, when I hear it, is just, you know, this, this idea of celebrating God. But what they were shouting was almost a command to Jesus. Save us now. Save us now. We need your help. As you go into this week, save us now. And, and, and so we hear this, we hear this, uh, this this parade that, that people were coming to and celebrating Jesus, but people were also saying, Jesus, we need You. Are You going to be that person who frees us? Are You going to be that person that brings to us a new world and a new life? Save us now. In uh, 2 Kings in 2 Kings 9.13, we see this verse. And this is just interesting. This is just a, we see that it says this. They heard, and, uh, Jehu became king. And uh, people were excited that he was becoming king. This is the Old Testament stuff. They hurried and took their cloaks and spread them under him on the bare steps. Then they blew the trumpet and shouted, Jehu is king. And so what we see in this laying of, of cloaks and laying of palm branches, it, it's, it's in some ways a common thing. It's showing respect, not just to to a prophet, but it's showing respect to a king. The people were believing that Jesus was coming in and He was King of Israel. He was the King. But it gets me to think, it gets me to think, what uh, all this is, is neat and all this is exciting. We see that fulfills prophecy. We see that it's showing and indicating that Jesus is Lord. But what does this mean? What does Palm Sunday mean for you and me today? You know, if we were asked to lay something down, what would we lay down? If we had something, an opportunity where Christ was there, would we lay our very best down? Would we, what would that be? And uh, I stole the laundry basket from Krista. I won't have any clean clothes this week, maybe. No. But uh, I have something. And... Uh, and uh, it just got me to think, like, like, what are we supposed to do? Like, in our, the new pastor will be taller, so you'll be able to see him, I guess. <laughs> so, sorry, balcony. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, uh, but what do we have that we're supposed to lay down? You know, and, and I think it's sort of, that's, that's sort of what Jesus is, is sort of trying to teach to us here, is that do we have things in our lives that we, we should lay down? You know, a lot of times we can look at it as the, the, the things that we struggle with, the things that keep us from God. You know, uh, let me lay down my materialism. You know, let me lay that down, the things that I covet from my neighbors uh, and, uh, and all that stuff. Uh, sometimes it's just that my relationships are just so broken. I don't communicate with my family. I don't communicate with friends. I, I just, I'm hurt. Uh, I yell at people that I shouldn't yell at. I don't listen. I don't love. Maybe we just need to lay those down but before God and just say, Lord, take that. You know? I, I give you that so I can honor you. I give you that because I know that it comes between you and me. And so I just lay that down. Maybe we just, there's those things that it's just hard to forgive, you know? Uh, like where you have really been unjustly served, you know? Or you didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve that. Your family didn't deserve that. Maybe it's just time to say, I'm going to lay this down. 
I want to give it to you, God, because I want to honor you with my life. The majority of these shirts were made by Travis, which is really good. But I think it's also something else. I think things that we need to lay down are, you know, God, you have made me good at creating, uh, creating things. You know, you've given me an imagination. You've given me the ability to create homes. You've given me to create uh, art. Lord, I, I give that to you. I lay it down to you. It is yours. Maybe it's that ability that you just say, uh, God, you have given me the gift to be able to go and, and speak with shut-ins. And uh, I'm just going to go and, and I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to give that to you. I'm going to talk to those people that, that are so often forgotten. And, and maybe, maybe for some of you, it's, it's I, just, I just need, I need to share Christ and what Christ has done in my life. I just encourage you to lay that down. Uh, just all those things, I think, and this is for all of you 80s fans, run MUMC instead of DMC, there you go. Uh, you know, I think it comes to just saying, I need to lay my life down. All of this is yours, God. All of this is yours. And then there's some of us, I think, and, and I just have to get this up here, where, uh, where we say, you know, I've had things in my past, and I've done them, and I'm not going to do them again. You know? And so, and we, need to, we need to forget that. And we need to say, no, I need to start acting for God again. And so my shirt for that is Illinois' Final Four shirt in 2005. And so my hope is that they start getting their act together and get back to a Final Four. But, but we have that in our life. Where we said, you know, I really was awesome for Jesus back in 1997. So I've done that. I'm good. But we need to lay that down and say, God wants to work in me right now. God wants me to be shaped right now. And this one has no purpose at all. It's just a St. Louis Cardinal shirt. So I just had to get one out of the drawer. But what if we laid all that stuff down? What if we laid it all down? So, Lord, this is yours. This, this struggles and these joys and the gifts that you have given me? What if these were our cloaks and our palm branches as Jesus came in and said, Lord, this is us. This is me honoring you. This is me saying, I am yours. So how does this happen? How do we get to this point? We throw down this. We throw down a welcome mat. <laughs> and we say, Lord, we welcome you into our lives. Now there are those points where we say, uh, we say, God, uh, as, as we welcome you, as we uh, allow you to come into our lives, if you know this like about a welcome mat, like sometimes it works like this, you know, it's just at the door, if you're still trying to figure out where to put your welcome mat, it's at the door, and uh, sometimes you have people come to the door and you just shake their hands. And, and that's, that's as far as they get in. And sometimes you have the times where you, you, can, you can have them come in and they get to like the entryway, but then you send them all out. And unless you have like lots of parties and stuff you know, where you welcome people in and, and they come in and they stay for a long time. You know, that's, that's that welcome. But with God, a lot of times we can, we can put that welcome mat out. We can put that welcome out out and just and just shake God's hand and say, "Well, I welcomed you in. Now let's let's see let's see what happens." And we don't really let them come into the house, or we let them into the entryway, and that's about as far as as we let God in. But if we really want to live for God, if we really want to be able to lay down our lives, then we need to welcome Him into our entire life. Say, come in and live here. Be my life. I lay everything down.